This small square surface has the capacity to store information equivalent to that of some 200,000 books containing 25 million pages. If we wanted to store that information in one of our present-day computers, we would need a 15 gigabyte hard disk. But by 2005, this little stamp-sized device should do just fine. The project behind this is called Millipede, and it's being developed at IBM's research lab in Zurich. The project is based on principles similar to those used in old data storage systems using punch cards. The difference is, this time around, it's being done at the nanometric level. In the metric system, a nanometer is a billionth of a meter. Nanotechnology means working at the theoretical limits of miniaturization. Anywhere from two to 10 atoms fit into a nanometer. Destroying infectious microbes. Locating cancerous cells and removing them one by one. Cleaning the environment by removing dangerous residue. Creating atom-sized supercomputers. There's hardly a human endeavor that would not be improved by the application of nanotechnology. All matter is made up of atoms. Once we are able to manipulate them, the possibilities in practically every area of human activity may be limitless. The main fields covered by nanotechnology is perhaps a little difficult to describe because nanotechnology has become so broad an endeavor, or a very broad interest. There are people working with nanoscale particles, that is particles with a dimension of the order of a nanometer or several nanometers. There are people working with nanometer thick metal films and ceramic films. There are biologists working with uh, bacterias, which they've learned to pattern on surfaces which um, have patterns of, on the order of several nanometers or, or tens of nanometers. It's really a tremendous opportunity and so many scientists have, have become active in this area. And so biologists, chemists, engineers, material scientists, physicists have all had their contributions to this field. So there's many areas that people are interested in. In 1959, Nobel Prize winner Richard Feynman predicted the advent of nanotechnology. His ideas became reality with IBM's scanning tunneling microscope in 1982. Since then, the manipulation of matter on an atomic scale has continued unabated. Technicians working in a laboratory in New York have created a 12 nanometer long engine that in a few years will be employed in anti-cancer therapies. Scientists at the University of Basel are working on a nanometric scaled biomechanical scanner designed to fight cancer cells from within tumors. Nanotechnological devices are manufactured in two different ways. One is known as the up-down approach. It entails the progressive reduction of dimensions. The second, called the down-up approach, uses the opposite process. Objects are built by assembling them atom by atom. Working at the nanometric level is not easy. Atoms are extremely delicate, and despite all our progress, they continue to demonstrate a peculiar form of quantum rebellion. During the assembly stage, for example, an atom may split for unexplained reasons. It may be due to a slight variation in temperature or because of some undetected interaction with an invasive molecule. In order to reduce such risks, experts have started looking at models designed by nature. Not that we can faithfully reproduce them yet with the necessary precision. 
but we do know that nothing can store information like a DNA molecule. No external protection mechanism can match the wall of a living cell. As far as nanorobots are concerned, nobody has designed a better locomotion system than the flagella used by supposedly primitive bacteria. Building nanostructures is no easy feat to be sure, but it probably won't be long before atomic-sized devices will be a part of everyday life. Nanotechnology is real today. Um, the, the new part of nanoscale science um, will take, depending on what you're talking about, five, 10, maybe 20 years. I could imagine molecular electronics coming into existence maybe 15, 20 years from now. Um, and then, of course, there's the life sciences side of things, biotechnology, uh, which is another aspect of nanotechnology that is not really uh, something that uh, is the main part of IBM's business, but we're very well aware of that. And we actually do have activities in biochemistry and biotechnology. Nanobiology, nanomedicine, nanoelectronics, terms that will probably become familiar sooner than we think. And it's possible that the lines between them all may vanish. And in a not so far off future, computers might be made of biological matter. They might even be able to repair themselves. Despite the thrilling and seemingly endless discoveries associated with the most minuscule part of our universe, we should remember that the 21st century has started and we still haven't found Higgs's boson. And of course, no one appears to be on the verge of announcing the key to the great unified theory of the universe, nor are we certain that there isn't something simpler than the standard model for particles and interactions. Quantum mechanics' exclusive postulates and Newton's laws are as unresolved today as they always have been, though they still seem to explain much of our world in their inimitable ways the unusual realm of the microcosmos. It has changed our lives and will continue to, even after the mysteries of the origin of everything have been revealed.